والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم He would say different types of, re- of remembrance of Allah and supplication any one of the following at a time either Subhana Rabbi al do you, have a, do you have a number for that, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim? Hey, sorry? Do you have a uh, number for that? First of all, yes. Number yeah, one. Number one, please. Number one, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. How perfect is my Lord, the Supreme, three times. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. All praises due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, man can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, man can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah alone, having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and his messenger. To proceed. The best of talks is the Quran, the best of guidance is the Sunnah, and well, the most evil of all matters are the ones innovated. For every newly innovated matter in Islam is an innovation, and every innovation in Islam is a misguidance, and every misguidance will lead to the hellfire. We are on to the chapter of Al Kaw Al Rukur. For those who have the Arabic version, it is page 132. And here, the Sheikh says that in this Rukun, so a Rukur, Rukun, Rukun means a pillar. If you don't really do the Rukur, whether you forgot it or you did not do it deliberately, your Raka'a will be invalid, which will entail the following Raka'a will be invalid. And if you have if you finish the prayer and you haven't done the Raka'a again, then the whole prayer will be invalid. So it is a Rukun. And he says that this in this rukun, you have to make one of these adhkar. Now, saying the adhkar in itself is not a rukun. It is a wajib. It is compulsory. So, saying the adhkar is not a rukun. So, if the person just made ruku, did not say anything, we don't jeopardize his prayer. And he says that he would bring this adhkar what is the translation here, Abdullah? It says that sometimes he brings this, sometimes he says the other one. Can you just read that translation again? Abdullah? Are you there, yeah, Abdullah? Oh, hang on a second. I have to can I ask you just leave your microphone on, please, if you don't mind. Okay, leave your microphone on. Abdullah Ahmed, please don't mute it again, please. Go ahead. Um Read from the beginning when you just said the first paragraph. You only read one paragraph before the. Okay, so he would say different types of remembrance of Allah and supplication, any one of the following at a time. Number one, Subhanahu Rabbi al I just answered that any one of the following at a time. If every word you're saying is important. Okay. okay. Every word you're saying is, is important. So he says one at a time. What does that mean? I would like you now to please go ahead and read for me the footnotes where it talks about at the end of this, it says fa'ida, which is something to benefit or a note. This is at the end of this of Karawukua, after it finishes, number seven. Okay. And there's a big note there. What page is that? 46. Okay. Can you read there? It says, is it permissible to combine? Can you understand that? Read yes. Note. Is there proof for combining two or more of these adhkar in one rukur or not? Okay. So he's asking now the question. We're gonna go, we've got here seven adhkar. Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Subuhun Quddus Rabbul Malaikati Waru, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, Allahumma firli, Allahumma laka raka tabika amant wa laka aslam, so on, so on. All of it, can we combine them together in one rukur? That's the question. Okay, now continue, please. The scholars have differed about this. Ibn al Qayyim was uncertain about this in Zad al Ma'ad. Nabawi chose the first possibility in al 
adhkar saying, it is best to combine all of these adhkar if possible, and similarly with the adhkar of other postures. Abu At-Tayyib Siddiq Hassan Khan disagreed with him, saying in Nuzul al-Abrar, it is narrated with one of them here, another one there, but I see no evidence for combining. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not combine them in one go, but he would say one of them sometimes, another one sometimes, to follow is better than to start something new. Right, these are the sayings of two scholars. He says at the beginning that Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah, he was not really sure on the person combine or should he stick to one at a time. So one rukur would be having Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. And another rukur and another raka and another salah will have, for example, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, or a different rukur and a different salah or a different raka. He would say, Allahumma laka raka'at wa bika aman. And he will keep with that supplication. Each rukur he will not add. He was hesitant. Or should he combine? As an Nawawi, he said, for verily, it is better to combine between these adhkar if it's possible. Okay, and he said that all the adhkar in other as well, like the sujood, same thing, it is better to combine. But Abu Tayyib Siddiq Hassan Khan, in his kitab, Nuzul al Abrar, he had refuted that argument and he said, no, he would bring this once and that once and that once, and there's no proof to combine. And the Prophet. He did not combine them in one rukur, but he would say this at a time and that at a time, and to follow is better than to elevate. Now, what is the Sheikh Al-Albani's opinion? Continue, please. This latter view is the correct one, Allah willing, but it is proved in the Sunnah to lengthen this posture, as well as others, until it is about the length of the standing. Hence, if the worshipper wishes to follow the Prophet وسلم, in this Sunnah, the only way is to combine adhkar, as Nawawi said, and as Ibn Nasr has related in Qiyam al-Layl, from Ibn Juraj has done by Ata, or to repeat one of the adhkar for which there is text for repetition. And this is closer to the Sunnah, and Allah knows best. Right. So Sheikh al-Albani, he says that I support what Siddiq Hassan Khan is to bring one, that one, and that one, not to combine. But then he says, well, what about if the person is going to be prolonging his rukur to such an extent that it will be equal to his PM, where the Prophet of Allah recited long swords, he's going to be now doing rukur. So if this person wants to imitate the sunnah of the Prophet, and sometimes he wants to prolong his rukur in order to equalize it with his standing posture when he recites the Fatiha and the surahs, so he, said he would never be able to do that except in one way, which is the way of the Nawawi, to combine all the adhkar, which is, is no problem at this time. If you want to prolong it so much, you could combine. Or to stick to one of them and keep repeating that dua, and he says this is closer to the sunnah, closer to the correct opinion. Now, um, you know for a fact that if you're going to be prolonging your rukur so much, just like the Prophet of Allah, he recited, Al-Baqarah, Al-Nisa, Ali Imran, in that order. Al-Baqarah, Al-Nisa, Ali Imran. And you're making your rukur equal to that, plus added to that, there is supplication in the middle, because the Prophet of Allah, in his prayer of the night, he would pass by, a, for example, Jannah verse, he would ask Allah for Jannah. He would pass by a, a verse talking about the hellfire, he would seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire, and so on and so forth. So his, up, his upright position, uh, his standing position would be so long to make your rukur like this by repeating one dua. I think it will make the person sleep. Uh, if you're going to keep saying Subhana Rabbi Ladim, Subhana Rabbi Ladim, Subhana Rabbi Ladim, about an hour. Uh, Subhana Rabbi Ladim, Subhana Rabbi Ladim, Subhana Rabbi Ladim. And also, you're going to get into the, as well, into the mode of eating the words. And this is happening. Which is that the person will say, after that, subhana rabbi adi, subhana subhana rabbi subhana 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 start not having just sub 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 because he keeps saying the same thing. So, yes, according to Sheikh al-Dan, it's closer to the sunnah, but if the person is going to end up like this, it would be better to make one dua plus another dua different plus because he's going to prolong it so much, so long. And it also will 
expel the boring thing because you're going to get bored to repeat something all the time. This reminds me as well to link it to making a car after the salah. After the salah, there is from the adhkar that is to say, Subhana Rabbi, uh, Subhanallah, 33, Alhamdulillah, 33, Allahu Akbar, 33, Subhanallah, 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 and Alhamdulillah, 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 La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, 34, 34, 33, 30, 30, 34. Now, that's one of the idea. Yeah. Now, that as well makes the person sometimes when he says, Subhanallah, 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 he will start eating some of the words. One companion came to the Prophet, وسلم, he said, Messenger of Allah, I saw in my vision, and after I made my prayer, I made the following dua, which is, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. 100 times, that means 25 each in that order. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. That's four. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. If you want to do that in your prayer, what do you do? Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. 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 That's five. You put in your left hand, one. And you do it again. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Then you finish another hand, that's two. And then another hand, that's three. And another hand, that's four. And another hand, that's five. That makes it 100. Because each hand, 20. Because it's four, multiply by five, 20. Multiply by five, you get 100. Nikhil al-Bani says, that dua in this following way is better than saying, Subhanallah, 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 33. And he considers that dua, which that companion had said. And then the Prophet of Allah, upon hearing this, he said, man, from now on, this is my supplication. It's an upgrade, update. So that is the best dua you say after the prayer now. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilallah, Allah Akbar. Shaykh al-Bani says as well, and I'm quoting what he says, that uh, this will uh, make the person not to eat. When he says subhanallah, 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 he might eat. But subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilallah, Allah Akbar. That that's means swapping from one word to another. It will make him alert, will not make him as well eat some of those words. Allah ta'ala alam. So if you're going to be prolonging your wukur, you have no, uh, no problem to gather between the adriya. You add subhana rabbi al-azim, subhana rabbi al-azim. After maybe say 20, 25, 100, 100 times or whatever, then you... Go to another one, okay? Subhan Quddus, Rabbul Malaikati, wa Ruh, and so on. So, no problem too. And that would, as I say, will give the person uh, a fresh start rather than to keep repeating something, I don't know how many thousands time, in order to make his ruku almost equal to his upright position, which is, of course, in his tahajjud. Right. So, alhamdulillah, we understand that now. Okay, now we go back to what the uh, reciter he said. The first dua, he said, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Okay, three times. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. three times. Uh, have, you, have you finished, by the way, all the things that Sheikh Al-Albani has said? You finished it, yes? You found in that note? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. But have you mentioned here, you've just said here as well, Arawah ibn Nasr fi Qiyam al-Layl, an ibn Jurayj an Ata. Yes? An Ata. Yes. Okay. Ata. And Ibn Juraj, Ibn Juraj, the student of Ata, basically, uh, Ibn Juraj, he asked Ata regarding what do you do in your rukur. So he said, well, if I'm not going to be quick, I'm going to be hastening, or I'm making my rukur quick, and there's nobody with me to make me say it quick, that means I'm not the imam, nor I'm the person behind an imam, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be having to stop another person. And I would say, Subhanaka wa bihamdika la ilaha illa and Subhana Rabbi la. And then he would say, Subhana Rabbi la. That means he would add these andriya together. That is supporting what I said regarding this issue. Allah Ta'ala a'lam. And we will come back now. Subhana Rabbi la. And he says here three times. Now, there's a footnote there, please, when he says three times. Can you read that? Ahmed Abu Dawood. Yes, this is narrated by Ahmed Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah. 
دار قطني طحوي بازر ان الطبراني الطحاوي والبزار وابن خزيمه والطبراني في الكبير جو فروم 7 on the authority of seven companions hence this refutes those who did not accept the specification of the glorifications to three times such as ibn al-qayyim and others ibn al-qayyim and others what did they say ibn al-qayyim they said that to restrict or to make a number of the dua it hasn't been mentioned there is no proof for that and the, they said as well that the sahaba they used to estimate you know but there is no such thing that it's been mentioned that he used to say it three times but this is a refutation to them and basically as the sheikh al-albani he had said has been mentioned from seven of the companions he did not put the seven here but he put it in his asal the seven companions like abdullah ibn mas'ud like abu hurair radiyallahu an like abu sa'id al-khudri uh, uh, and other companions who have been mentioned and for ibn al-yamam who had mentioned it they mentioned that he made subhan rabbi al-azim three times okay three times and Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, it has been narrated from him, he's not a companion, not even from the followers, later on he was a scholar, he says, it is I would prefer for the Imam if he's leading the people to say Subhan Rabbi al-Azim five times, the same thing with Subhan Rabbi al-A'la al sujood five times, in order to make the person behind him able to say relaxingly Subhan Rabbi al-Azim three times. Because once he goes to the ruku, he's going to go before the people. He's going to start tasbih. So if he adds to his tasbih another two tasbih, by the time this ma'mum will come down, he had lost one, okay. And by the time he starts, and by the time that imam would go up, he lost another one. So he'll make it about three times. So he would say, I would prefer for the imam to say five times. Now, there is of course no proof, but let me just tell you something which is important: that the Subhana Rabbi al Adim. Okay, that is being mentioned as a number wise three times. But I could say it once, I could say it twice, I could say it three times and I keep saying three times. But when I say after three times, there is no numbering. If I'm gonna, for example, in my prayer, I'm gonna prolong Rukur, whether it's in Salat al Layl, it's really, really long, or in a far prayer. And I won't make Subhanahu Rabbil Adi more than that. There is no such thing. I will start saying that is Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim and counting. Especially those people who think that is, oh, it's three times. That means we have to do it witter. Witter means odd number. He would say now, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim 502, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim 503, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim 504. So he'll be now concerning himself about numbering and counting. After three times, don't count. That's it. You do it now, my. The, 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 your your mood, how much you want to make your record long, okay? No such thing that you are going to be counting because you're going to be busy yourself for counting. And also, this is a refutation for those who say, because there is some of the uh, scholars who follow some madhab, they would say that if the person had made more than nine times Subhana Rabbi al or even Subhana Rabbi al Sujood, then there is Sujood Sahu. There is too such that of forgetfulness because you can't make it more than that. You forgot that means. No, it is more than that. Prophet of Allah, he used to make his ruku so long. That's the proof. Now, how, if I'm going to make it more than just number nine, how can I make line up the nine times to be equal in time wise that the Baqarah and Nisa Ali Imran? Not impossible. Even I would say, and I'm really slow motion. I can't do that. So after three times, there's no numbering. You could. And do as much as you can, but remember, the sunnah is all the time to make the following equal in time. Your rukur, you're up from the rukur, and your sajda, and up from the sajda, and the second sajda. So how many things we mentioned here? Five. They are equal in timing. Your rukur, and then when Sami Allah Liman Hamida. That's as well, which is people they don't make it like the Rukwa. It's always faster than that one. And then the Sajda, and subhanAllah, they make the Sajda more than the Raka, which is not correct. The Rukwa is supposed to be at equal or at least more, but not Sujood is more than the Rukwa. People, they do the, the Imams that do all it against the Sunnah. So this is our equal. Now, again, Rukwa, Sami Allah, Liman Hamida, Sujood, 
between the two sajda, which imams, they are really two fasters, well, between the two sajda. So it's equal as well to the sujood, and then the second sajda. All of those relatively very close in timing. Sometimes, sometimes, this is very rare, he made it Prophet Salam, which when he made his Salat al Layl, Al Baqarah al Nisa Ali Amra, he had made his Rukur and his Sami Alam al Hamida, and his all of that equal to his Qiyam, the first one. So that means the two rak'ah of his it took him up to the Fajr prayer, up to the Fajr, all night, these two rak'ah. Because he had recited Al Baqarah, Nisa Ali Imran, with as well Dua in the middle. He recited it so in, in time wise, like he recited in his Rukur and after Sami Allah and Hamid, and even his Sajjud, and even the Sajjda and the second Sajjda, and he did that in the same Rakah. That's, uh, I would never think a person would have been able to do it. It's only the Prophet. Wayb, coming back to, and he says here, after that, Wakana Ahyana, after that, read Abdullah after you said three times, read. And sometimes, but sometimes he would repeat it more than that. Okay, repeat it. You have as well a footnote for that? Yes. The footnote says that this can be deduced from the ahadith, which make it clear that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to make his standing, ruku' and sujood equal in length, as mentioned after this section. Here, his standing is something wrong with it. Even it's, the translation is not wrong, but it's in the Arabic book as well wrong. Is standing, which standing here? That's after Rukur. Okay? So please put a note there. He's standing after the Rukur. As we're going to see, inshallah, as he said, we're going to see it in the section after this. So he's standing after Rukur, not the standing of the recitation of the Quran. So he's standing after Rukur. His Rukur and his Sujood are equal in time wise. Okay. Now we come back to the text. Fadl al Matan. Once, in the night prayer, he repeated it so much that his ruku' became nearly as long as his standing before it, in which he had recited three of the long surahs, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah, Surah Nisa, and Surah Ali Imran. This prayer was full of supplication and seeking forgiveness, and the hadith has already been mentioned under recitation in the night prayer. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you remember who is that companion who prayed with the Prophet Wasallam, Ya Abdullah? Um, Who's that companion? Okay, I know that lots of people would know, but Abdullah should be knowing. Hudayf ibn al Yaman. It is Hudayf ibn al Yaman. He had lined up with the Prophet in a prayer of the night, and I don't think he had repeated that lining up. He did not do it again because he had prayed a prayer that I wouldn't say it made him regret, but his back was aching after that prayer. And that is this prayer when he lined up behind him. And when he's the start, Prophet started and after the Fatiha reciting Alif Lam Mim and Hudayf ibn Yaman is from the Hafidhi Hufar. When you say Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitab as al Baqarah, straight away. And that's when his heart, Hudayfa, boom, al Baqarah. So that's when he said to himself, he will recite 100 verses. 100 verses for us is too much. But for him, it's okay, I'll take it. 100 verses and then he make Rukur. Boom, he's out again. Went on. He said, he will divide the Baqarah uh, in between first Raqqa and second Raqqa. And that's too much for us, but for him, it's okay, at least. He could bear it. Boom, he went on. Midway in Baqarah, still went on. He said, maybe, inshallah, he will start the Baqarah and he will make Rukur. And that's for us too, too, too much. Yet it's for him just calming himself down. That's it. And after that, he went to An Nisa. When he went to An Nisa, he stopped talking to himself, saying that, well, maybe he's going to recite 100 verses from the Nisa and make Rukur. He didn't say, for example, maybe he will recite Ali Imran or not, because before it, just he had put his hand in the hands of Allah. He said, surrender. Allah was he doesn't know when the Prophet ﷺ is gonna okay stop. And then when the prayer is finished, later on he came to the Prophet and he said, Messenger of Allah, I, I find this in my back. I mean, my back, that means my back is aching from that prayer. The Prophet ﷺ, he said he should have told me. 
I mean, he gave me an adjust, it's something that you can't bear that prayer. But it was a prayer of the night. I mean, it's his mistake he joined. طيب. Now we're coming now to <clears throat> second dua, which is Subhana Rabbi al wa bihamdihi three times. Read, please. The second remembrance, <laughs> Subhana Rabbi al wa bihamdihi. How perfect is my Lord, the supreme, and praised be he three times. Okay, so it is exactly as the first one with the addition of one word, wa bihamdihi. Instead of Subhana Rabbi al this is Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa bihamdihi. Now, the third is so three times, so as I said, exactly. When we said now, we said three times. Okay, three times here, it means that that's the minimum. You could say it once, twice, three, but three, but after three times, no counting. We have a count. Baba. We said it four times. Don't stick to four times all the time and make it like a new sunnah. Now. Number three. The third one being Subuhan Kuddusan Rabbul Malaikati Ruh. Perfect, blessed, Lord of the angels and the spirit. Okay. Subuh or Sabuh. Both is correct. But the one has been used more is with the Dhamma on the scene. Subuh. You can say Sabuh. You can say Subuh. And uh, a Sabuh, we have a foot. Do you have a football for that one? Yes, there is. Well, so Abu Ishaq said, Subuh means the one who is free from any defect of any So defect. the one who is being absolved from any defect. Now, while Quddus means the blessed or the pure. Al Mubarak or Al Tahir, blessed or pure. Now, Ibn Sayyidah said, Glorified and blessed are attributes of Allah, mighty and sublime. Because he is glorified and sanctified by others. Right. There is nothing about the ruh. A ruh, you translate it as the spirit. Yes. That's not right, correct translation. A ruh, that's what does it mean? Because here he translated it by literal meaning. A ruh, either it means most likely Jibreel alayhi salam. So a ruh. Is Jibreel Or it could be said that it is a category of the angels called Aruh. That's another one which is correct as well. Or it's been said that third interpretation of Aruh is that Aruh is the greatest of all angels in terms of size wise. The greatest of all angels in size wise. Okay. Number four. Number four. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Allahumma khfirli. How perfect you are, O oh Allah, and praises are for you. O oh Allah, forgive me. He would say it often in his ruku'ah and sujood, implementing the order of the Quran. Implementing the order of the Quran? I don't understand that, implementing the order of the Quran. Mm. Uh, well, taking. A uh, yeah, yeah, okay, taking from the yeah, well, implementing the order of the Quran as a yeah, the meaning of it. Yeah, okay, inshallah, here, inshallah. Give me the footnote, please. Implementing the Quran refers to the saying of Allah, then glorify with the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness for he is of returning in Surah Asr. So, this supplication. Basically, he says that it is an interpretation. That's what I wanted to say. An interpretation over the Quran, what is in the Quran. In the Quran, we have surah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا Surah Al-Nasr. So, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Allah is saying to his Prophet Muhammad sallam, glorify Glorify, uh, make the speech of with the praise of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. For verily, he is the one accepts forgiveness for repentance. And he had the interpretation of this that teaches he prophesied said, Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. That means I glorify thee, O your Lord, with your praise. So that's the interpretation. And then Allahumma gfirli, that's the second part, O Lord, 
forgive for me because he said seek forgiveness and he used to say this a lot not just in the rukur but also in the sujood but this is a supplication for double uh, double places make it in the rukur you can make it in the sujood and listen to me here for verily we have a hadith that is from the Prophet ﷺ. I would like you to read it for me, which is on the, you go to the second title after this. The title after that, it says, make a ruku'ah long. After this, it says, prohibition of recitation of the Quran in the ruku'ah. Yes? Abdullah, yes? Um, after number seven, after number seven, you'll find, number seven. yeah you'll find the prohibition of recitation of the Qur'an in the Ruku'ah. Okay. Oh, yes, I see that. Yeah. But we prepare next time, so much we can be quick. Huh? When you prepare, you'll be quick. Because you'll be familiar with what you're reading. But then it says here that, and, okay, he used to prohibit of recitation of the Qur'an in the Ruku'ah and the Sujood. Read after that, and he used to say? Further, he used to say, verily, I have indeed been forbidden from reciting the Quran in Ruku'ah or Sujood. In the Ruku'ah, therefore, glorify the supremacy of the Lord, mighty and sublime, in it. As for the Sujood, exert yourselves in supplication in it, for it is most likely that you will be answered. Now, let's, let's focus upon this hadith and understand it properly. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, as for the Ruku'ah, he said, I have been prohibited to recite Quran. In the Rukuah, I can't, for example, recite Fatiha House or Bakara when I'm Rukuah or I'm Sujood. But he says, In the Rukuah, glorify in it your Lord. The glorification, say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that's a glorification. And then it's in the Sujood, it says, Make supplication in it. Make, make supplication in it and strive hard to make the supplication. For verily, فَقَمِن That is, it, it, you will be more likely to be fulfilled. Your, your supplication will be fulfilled. Maybe some people might understand from this hadith that there is no dua in the ruku'ah. And I'm pretty sure that so many of you now, they don't make dua in the ruku'ah because of this hadith and because of the habit that he is into it. Which is wrong. Yes, we can return back to our hadith, which is the... the the fourth supplication of the Ruku'ah, it says, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, Allahumma gfirli. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, that is praising, glorifying Allah. But what is that? Allahumma gfirli. O oh Lord, forgive for me. What does that mean? That's a dua. So in this, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu he made dua. So there is a proof in this. Number four, write it down. That there is a dua, I could make dua in my ruku'ah. Uh, the, and the hadith, which is the, first, the, the one that we have read, where the Prophet of Allah وسلم, he said, in the ruku'ah, glorify your Lord, as in for the sujood, strive harder in the dua, for verily you will be fulfilled in your supplication, doesn't mean that you cannot make dua in the ruku'ah. As Al Hafid he said in Al Fatih, he said, This saying of the Prophet, ﷺ, he said, That is, it does, has no understanding of saying that don't make dua in the ruku'ah. And also from this hadith, Ibn Dakhit al Eid, he says, Verily, you could make supplication in the ruku'ah. But the sujood is more of a place than the Rukur to make the, so that I mean the precedence of your, of your dua should be in the sujood. But no problem, you can make the dua in the Rukur. Because you will be in the sujood the most closest to Allah. Closest time when he is to his Lord, when he is prostrated. So it's basically, that is, when we make dua in the Rukur, we should be making more dua in the sujood. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that I can't make ruku'ah, a dua in my ruku'ah. So, or verily, we understand with this, alhamdulillah, that I am allowed to 
make dua in the ruka'an. That's very important. That we make ruka'an. And maybe as well, the dua in the sujood can be longer than the dua of the ruku'an. But there is dua in the ruku'an. Okay. I cannot recite Quran, okay? But we're going to say something else, inshallah. We'll come to the title of the prohibition of recitation of the Quran. We're going to come to that, inshallah. Okay. So, alhamdulillah, we understood from this that there is dua in the ruku'an. Let's go to number five. The fifth. Allahumma laka raka'a wa bika amant wa laka aslamt anta rabbi khash'a laka sam'i wa basari khash'a laka sam'i khash'a laka sam'i wa basari wa mukhi wa azmi wa fi rawayah wa idami wa asabi We don't say in our dua wa fi riwayah. That means it's in another narration. You should say in another narration wa idami <laughs> It reminds me of those people who were making tawaf, okay? And there's a person who is a mubtada', sahib bid'ah, and he is the mutawif, the one who takes the people and made them make tawaf. And these people, they don't understand anything. Basically, they just follow the man who's in the front, okay? And this person is holding a booklet, okay? And it says, first, for example, a booklet. Let me just get a booklet here. Let's say this one, okay? So the first says a dua of the first circumambulation, first tawaf. First rotation, second rotation. And in that says, for example, Allahumma, Allahumma, and they repeat, Allahumma, Ighfirli, they say Ighfirli, Warhamni, and they Warhamni, they repeat. And then in the, in the, some of the dua is not complete in this page, okay, all right? So this page is not complete on it. So the, the continuation of the following page. So at the end of the page, they would say, Iqlib al-Safha, turn the page over. So we read it, turn the page over, the people would say, turn the page over. And that's how Abdullah is saying, wa fi riwaya. No, I'm not going to say in my dua wa fi riwaya. Okay? Fi riwaya means in another narration. All right? So let's just start the dua again. Allahumma laka sabika amma laka aslamta anta rabbi khasha'a laka sam'i wa basari wa bukhi wa azmi wa asabi. But another narration it says, wa idami. Amma staqallat lihi qadami lillahi rabbil alameen. Continue please. So this translates to, oh Allah. To you I have bowed, in you I have believed, to you I have submitted, you are my Lord. Humbled for you are my hearing, my seeing, my marrow, my bone, my sinews, and whatever my feet carry, are humbled for Allah, Lord of the worlds. Uh, do you have anything footnote for that one? For this one? I don't think so. No, do you? There isn't. There isn't. Yeah, because everything you have explained and the translated and the translation is explanation. So in this dua, basically, I am saying, Allahumma kala rakaka, laka raka. So I am submitting to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala myself. That means I am in complete submission to the Almighty Azza wa Jal. I'm not submitting to anybody else. That's what it means. Allahumma laka raka, that means I'm not making record to anybody else. No bowing, whether in martial arts or anything like this, except to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma kala karaka. Wa bika amantu wa laka. And for you, I believe in you. And I submit to you. Kasha'a laka sam'i wa basari. That is my hearing, my sight. All of that submit. And this is to show the ultimate submission. Because I don't sub make record to anybody except for you. So all my limbs, okay, had reached the ultimate in the submission that even my hearing submits to you. I will not hear except what pleases you. I will not see except what pleases you. That's when you're saying these things and you know what you're talking about, the new prayer will take you to another level. Not the prayer that the people they do, which is a habit. They don't know what they're saying and then how many rak'ah they have done. and It just like becomes a habit. They don't feel the uh, khushu'ah. You don't feel the ruh salah the core of the salah. What is the core of salah is all about? When you understand the meaning of these words. So, because I'm submitting myself, I'm making a to no one except for you, everything in me is reaching the ultimate submission. My hearing, my seeing, my mukh, my brain, wa'avni, qal wa'idhami, in another narration, and my, my bones, ma'asabi, even my nerves, and everything my foot carries. Everything is submitting to Allah, the Lord of Al Alami. Number six is the same thing, but I read it my in myself. You don't have to translate. Allah This is an addition. 
انت ربي خشع سمعي وبصري ودمي هذا ما بقى بشي ودمي ولحمي وعظمي وعصبي لله رب العالمين so we got here an addition of following وعليك توكلت and then also دمي ولحمي دمي ولحمي those are which is my blood and my flesh is submitting عليك توكلت means upon you I depend upon okay number seven please last seven. one Seventh is Subhana dil Jabarut wal Malakut wal Kibriyai wal Adama. No. How perfect is he who has all power, kingdom, magnificence, and supremacy, which he used to say in the night prayer. So this supplication is for the night prayer. It's not to be said in the uh, the prayer which is the Fard prayer. So here, Subhana the Jabaruti, Wal Malakuti, Wal Kibriyai, Wal Adama. Al Jabaruti, Wal Malakut. Do you have any footnote? Um, not for this one. No. But which is uh, Allah's being the omnipotent, the one who's over everything. He's the one who's got. He's the one who's running everything. Nobody runs anything except for Him, the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the word Jabarut and Malakut. It's ex exaggeration of that Allah has got the dominion, is the omnipotent. So basically, it is exaggeration phrases. Jabarut, you know, Jabr, wal Malakut, from the Mulk, wal Kibriya. Al Kibriya is the pride of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wal Kibriya and wal Adama. Wal Kibriya, wal Adama. طيب. Al Kibriya, it is maybe the same thing as Al Jabarut. Well, Malakut, the same thing. So it is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection of his essence, the Almighty Azza wa Jal, his perfection of his existence. No one can be described with these except for the Almighty Azza wa Jal. The following title, please. Lengthening the Ruku'ah. Now. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to make his Ruku'ah, his standing after Ruku'ah, his sujood, and he's sitting in between the two sajdas, nearly equal in length. So that's what we just said before when we corrected the word standing. So the Prophet of Allah is to make his ruku' equal to his standing after the ruku'. Yes? Is that what it says? Yeah. And his sujood, that is first sajda, and his second sajda, and in, in between the two sajda. All, all of that, equal in timing. Equal in timing. And you remember, Abdullah, when I asked you after number seven, there is a because I don't have the English in front of me. I said, uh, lengthening the ruku'ah. He didn't say, I, I can't see it. No, you just said it. So it's there. You've got a title called Lengthening the Ruku'ah. Right, the following title? Forbiddance of reciting the Qur'an in ruku'ah. No. He used to forbid recitation of the Qur'an, ruku'ah, and sujood. Further, he used to say, Verily, I have indeed been forbidden from reciting the Qur'an in ruku'ah or sujood. In the ruku'ah, Therefore, glorify the supremacy of the Lord, mighty and sublime. In it, as for the sujood, exert yourselves in supplication in it, for it is most likely that you will be answered. Footnote. Um, Muslim. The, there is one regarding the sujood, which says that um, the forbiddance is general, hence covering both obligatory and voluntary prayers. The addition of Ibn Hasakir, as for voluntary prayers, then there is no harm, is either Shad or Munkar. Ibn Hasakir pointed out a defect in it, so it is not per permissible to act according to it. Yeah. So we are prohibited to recite Quran in the Ruku of the Sujood of any prayer, whether it's obligatory or a voluntary. That hadith which says that as for the voluntary is no problem, that hadith is not authentic. It is a riwayah weak. Now, when we say it is prohibited to recite the Quran, that is recitation of the Quran, but if you have taken a verse, which that verse is in the Quran, a supplication, and there are plenty of that in the Quran. رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيَ يُنَادِ لِلْإِيمَانِ أَنْ آمِنُوا رَبِّكُمْ فَآمَنَّا رَبَّنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا كَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّئَاتِنَا that's a verse. That's a verse. 
وربنا واتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامه ذا سيرفيس بس سوبليكيشن اتس ا دعاء اف اي تيك ذات از ا دعاء نو بروبلم اي كود ميك ذس از كول يتاول القران از ويل which is i'm taking the interpretation of the quran but i'm not reciting it if i did it like a recitation not allowed okay so that's the difference between reciting the quran or quoting from the quran a verse which means a supplication and the best thing in the in the report or in the sujood is to the dua to the prophet so you got now six of them that you can do in fard and sunnah and the seventh one you can take it in the salat al-layl choose from that that's enough inshallah for you to use that okay that supplication of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi وسلم by which we had come alhamdulillah to the end of the titles i wanted to talk about next inshallah time we'll talk about al-i'tidal min al-ruku' wa ma yaqulu fi that is to what do you say when you come up from the ruku' this is um can we make a start in it so you could really just go to the at least to the supplications is that okay for you stretching uh, up from the ruku' and what is said and what is to be said then yeah. next he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would straighten up his back out of the court saying sami allahu liman hamida allah listens to the one who praises him he also ordered the one who prayed badly to do that when he said to him no person's prayer is complete until he has said takbir then made ruku' then has said allah listens to the one who praises him until he is standing straight when he raised his head he would stand straight until every vertebra returned to its place right so we understand now this is a pillar which is to get up from the ruku' and standing up this is a pillar so if a person went from the ruku' and he did not stand up fully and he went to the sujood his rak'ah is invalid okay his rak'ah is invalid so he has to stand up this is a pillar rukn hadha ruknun it's a rukn and he said prophet of allah said that your salah will not be complete until you say Sami Allah liman hamida and you stand up now saying Sami Allah liman hamida and the word rabbana wa lakal hamd that's compulsory not a pillar every pillar is compulsory but not every compulsory is a pillar or a condition so Sami Allah liman hamida and rabbana wa lakal you got two sayings dhikr dhikr of the going up from this you are in the ruku' going up from the ruku' Sami Allah liman hamida standing up he say rabbana wa lakal hamd what is the mistake that people they do they go up and then there they say sami allah liman hamida rabbana wa lakal hamd so they made this empty okay or they say sami allah liman hamida rabbana wa lakal hamd before they reached up they already said rabbana wa lakal hamd they left this empty so it is this two zikrs which is the zikr going up from the ruku' to the upright and the zikr of the upright rabbana wa lakal hamd ربنا لك الحمد ربنا ولك الحمد or another one اللهم ربنا ولك الحمد as we're going to see in the adhkar okay all of that is going to be seen in the adhkar inshallah طيب now you understood this okay we're going to go continue please وامرا there's a footnote here which says um, the vertebrae means the bones making up the spine from the base of the neck of the neck to the coccyx according to Qamus okay that means he stands up until all of this goes back the spine now next he would say while standing rabbana wa lakal hamd our lord and to you all be praise we're going to see that as yes. well we used to say allahumma later on tafaddal he has commanded all worshippers whether behind an imam or not to do the above on rising from ruku' by saying pray as you have seen me praying so he said that he had commanded any person whether he is an imam or whether he's behind the imam to say this which is what which is what two sami allah liman hamida and rabbana wa lakal hamd two of them 
Because he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. So we've seen the Imam saying, Sami Allah liman hamida. We say what? Sami Allah liman hamida. And the Imam, he would not say Rabbana kalhamd loudly, but the Prophet said, when you hear him saying, Sami Allah liman hamida, say Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Continue, please. He also used to say, the Imam is there to be followed. When he has said, Allah listens to the one who praises him. When the, Allah, when, when the Imam said, Sami Allah liman hamida, when the Imam says, Sami Allah liman hamida, then say, Allahumma, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Allahumma, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Allah will listen to you, for indeed Allah, blessed and exalted, has said by the tongue of his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah listens to the one who praises him. Okay, please read the footnote. This hadith. Okay. This hadith does not prove that those following an imam should not share with the imam in saying, Allah listens to the one who praises him. Just as it does not prove that the imam does not share with those following him in saying, Our Lord, to you be all praise. This is because the purpose of this hadith is not to be set out exactly what the imam and his followers should say in this position. Rather, it explains that the followers' tahmeed should be said after the imam's tasmi'ah. This is supported by the fact that the Prophet wasallam used to say the tahmeed when he was the imam, and also because the generality of this saying, pray as you have seen me praying, dictates that the follower should say what the imam says. Example, the tasmi'ah. Those respected brothers who refer to us in this issue should consider this, and perhaps what we have mentioned is satisfactory. Whoever would like further discussion on this issue should refer to the article by the Hafiz Suyuti, Suyuti on this matter in his book, Al Hawi Lil Fatawi. He's just saying here basically, this ahadith tells us that it is the Sunnah for the Imam to say, Sami Allah Iman Hamida, and also say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Not just to say Rabbana wa lakal hamd on its own. When the Imam says, Sami Allah Iman Hamida, we say, he said, say, we say Rabbana wa lakal hamd, but also the Imam says Rabbana wa lakal hamd. And this is the madhab of the Jumhur. And this is also what Abu Yusuf or Muhammad, the students of Imam Abu Hanifa, had said in contrast to Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, where they have said, both of them, that the Imam only says, Sami Allah liman hamida, but he doesn't say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So the madhab of Abu Hanifa or Imam Malik, regardless, but we have, of course, the two premier students, Yusuf and Muhammad, Abu Yusuf, sorry, and Muhammad, the two premier students of Imam Abu Hanifa, they said, no, the Imam says, Sami Allah liman hamida, and also when he's up high, he says, Rabbana lakal hamd. And we say that Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, they're wrong. They have no hujjah, no proof for this. But the Prophet Sallallahu he said, pray as you have seen me pray. Now, if we look to Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, his book Al-Majmur, we'll find even better explanation than Al-Imam Al-Suyuti in his book, which is that is Tafu Tashni'ah fi Hukmi Tasmi'ah. And that is the ruling of the Tasmi'ah. He has, MashaAllah, made a very good discussion regarding this issue. Um, and that is to say that they, regarding the Ma'moon and the Imam saying, Sami Allah liman hamida. So when the Ma'moon is behind the Imam, we find people, they skip. So we find, so we say, Abu Hanifa said, when the Imam is doing, uh, he only does Sami Allah liman hamida. He does not say Rabbana al So this is wrong. But also we find other people that when they are behind the Imam, we only say, that is Rabbana wa lakal hamd. We don't say, Sami Allah Liman Hamida. Al-Hafid uh, 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 Ibn Hajar Rahimahullah, he said that this matter is almost similar to the matter when the Prophet he said regarding saying Ameen. When the Prophet he said if the Imam says Ameen, then say Ameen. So this doesn't mean the Imam should not say Ameen. He would say Ameen. And when the Prophet he said, Man wafaqa ta'minuhu ta'min al-malaika, when his your ta'min is equivalent or synchronizes with the ta'min of the angels, your, your sins will be forgiven. So we say that this hadith, 
that it came here, where would you, would you hear the Imam saying, Sami'a Allahu liman hamida? You say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. It did not come, Sheikh al Bani says, to show that, oh, that this is who, what he who says who. No. Here he said the Sheikh is number one, or he says it's the only one. He said, that is, to show that your tahmid, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, is after Sami'a Allahu liman hamida. I'm going to add to that as well. It's to show as well that al Imam, he says, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, Silently. This is a proof that is the Iman says Rabbana al Hamd silently. He does not say it okay loudly. And you are okay being commanded to follow the Imam in whatever he says loudly. Okay? Everything he says, Allahu Akbar, you say Allahu Akbar. When he says Sami Allah ibn Hamida, you say Sami Allah ibn Hamida. But because there is something else that the Imam says which is silently. You don't hear the Prophet of Allah, he said to them, say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. As for Sami Allah wa lakal hamd, is already in the hadith, sallu kama ra'aytum when you usalli. Pray like you have seen me pray. And also it is in the other hadith, when the Imam says takbir, you say takbir. Okay? So you do what the Imam is doing. In the manju'il al-Imam al-Tamari. So all these hadith tells us to say what the Imam says openly, loudly. You have to follow it. Sami Allahu liman hamida. We say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Okay? Right. Now, he says at the end, he said that their proof from this riwayah, from this narration, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 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 he would listen to the one who makes tahmeed. Because the Imam said, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah hears to the one who praises him. So you say, okay, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. To you belong the praise, O Lord. That doesn't mean that Imam say doesn't say it. He says Sami Allah liman hamida, and also he says Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So both, both they say that. So in this one, alhamdulillah, we say that you are being commanded to follow the Imam. There is now there's something wrong happening all the time. We find it in the Haram, which is we hear that the person who is repeating the Imams, the Kabirs. Okay, which well, he's not supposed to do that because there is no need for it anyway, because his takbir is audible to everybody, because the Imam speaks in a microphone, and that microphone has got a wire. That wire goes to a system it's called amplifier, and that amplifier goes to speakers. And the person who repeats his takbir, he speaks in another microphone, his microphone goes on another wire, and the wire goes to the same system, and that same system goes to the same speaker. So what are we doing here? Why are we repeating the takbir? It is something that they do it, which is a bid'ah. On top of that, they, as well, when the Imam says, Sami Allahu liman hamida, I'm sure that you've been there, you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Okay? Rabbana wa lakal hamd. They skip Sami Allah. You should have said, Sami Allahu liman hamida. I remember one of my students here, I don't know if he's here or not, Bilal. But if you are here, Bilal, are you here? Write a message. To us, yes, nah. that's Bilal. He was with me in the uh, last time when we were in Hajj. I think it's two years ago, and uh, <laughs> and I we were doing our Maghrib and Isha in uh, Arafah. We were supposed to do it in Musdalifah, but because we were late, so we did it in Arafah. The midnight is pushing very very close. So I let the people, and I made Bilal because it's too tall, mashallah be at the end where it's between us and the sisters on the other side as well so they could hear us because we don't have any loudspeakers anymore everything's been taken from us so i said now line up and, and the, the person who's going to repeat my takbir is bilal inshallah at the end okay so i started my prayer and then made ruku allahu akbar so he said allahu akbar they made ruku and i said sami allahu liman hamida and bilal said Sami Allahu liman hamida because he knows he studies and he's a student of knowledge, but because he is, I would say black, but because he is not an Arab, so he is very vulnerable. Everybody in there praying, and you could really as well support me here, Bilal. Everybody said, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, like they are objecting on him. He says, Yeah, true. Rabbana wa lakal hamd, are you wrong? Huh? So now we come to the second. Allahu Musta'an. 
سامي الله he said he said سامي الله لمن حمد أنا بقول بقى بقى وانا كل حبيبي حياتي ما أسكر ما أسكر ما أسكر and before we did the Isha, I had to address them, the brothers. Even though that, mashallah, you are Bangladeshi and you are, mashallah, Muslim from birth and you keep Muslim all the way, and this guy is in racist term, but I think he's more understanding than you guys. He studied the prayer of the Prophet of Allah, where you took your prayer from somebody else. You took it maybe from your father, or you just saw somebody praying. All of you are wrong, Ikhwani. Say what they, I'm the Imam and I'm telling you, what he's doing is correct. So the Isha prayer, alhamdulillah, we had no problem. Sami Allah liman hamida. We had, mashallah, we had 70, 80 people with us. Okay, Sami, the brothers and sisters, Sami Allahu liman hamid, alhamdulillah, more than 80 people. Uh, so uh, that's why we say, Sami Allahu liman hamid, you say, Sami Allahu liman hamid. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. You say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Now, after that, please read, Ya Abdullah, the last bit, please. You also gave a reason for this command in another hadith saying, for he who's saying coincides with that of the angels will have his past sins forgiven. Right, so he who synchronizes is saying with the angels. Now the synchronization here, okay, the synchronization. The synchronization here, as the Sahib al-Hawi, he says, that um, the synchronization is basically is the synchronization of the niyyah. Okay, huh? synchronization of your niyyah, of your ikhlas. The synchronization of your ikhlas. You have a footnote here? There is no footnote here. No, there's no footnote. Okay, no, so the just... synchronization here, what is meant is the ikhlas of the person. Okay, so that means you are striving in your intention, uh, in your repentance. Okay, this is the one whom his uh, previous sins will be forgiven, inshallah. This is not Sahib al Hawi has said it, sorry. This is Ibn Abd al Bar in Al Tanweer who had said it. Taib. Uh, Taib. Now we come to as well when he said, for of them, it shows you that you know the, the, the magnitude of, of, of benefit you gain from the adhkar that it has a power to forgive your previous sins. Okay? So, and also the angels. Seeking forgiveness for the believers. Your adhkar is powerful. Don't forget about them. Last thing, please read that. Abdullah, before we start with the adriya, we'll leave that. So just say it. He used to raise up his hands. He used to raise his hands when straightening up in the way described under the opening takbir. Right. And after that, the adriya, which is inshallah next week. Uh, he used to raise up his hands in, according to what has been mentioned before. Is that what he says? Is that what he said? Yes, under the open takbir, which was a okay. previous... Open takbir. So we said, open takbir, we said, Allahu Akbar, that is Allahu Akbar with raising up your hands. Or, Allahu Akbar, then you raise up your hands. Or, you raise up your hands first and then say, Allahu Akbar. All that is correct. Same thing with Sami Allahu liman hamida, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So, when we go to the ruku, we say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. The raising of the hands is going to be when I'm up. Now, this is linked to Rabbana wa lakal hamd. How? So, say when I'm up, I say Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Either with raising, or before, or after. So I would say, Sami Allahu liman hamid. I'm up now. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. That's raising up the hands with the saying of Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Or, Sami Allahu liman hamid. Rabbana wa lakal hamd, and then I raise my hands. Or, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. I raised, and then I said, all these three things are correct. You can do this, you can do that, you can do whatever you like, with, before, or after. Wallahu ta'ala alam. And inshallah, we will continue next week. And next week, hopefully, we will cover the issue of putting the right on the left. Is it correct to do it after? That is saying, Sami Allah liman hamid rabbana wa lakal hamd, which is after the rukur. Are we supposed to put the right on the left or we're supposed to read it on the side? We'll discuss that inshallah in details. But if you have any questions, please, I'm gonna uh, at the moment make you allowed. So I'm gonna mute, unmute everybody. Please mute your microphones. Please mute your microphones. I'm gonna unmute all of you now.
Okay. See some people who are not muted. Now I don't I can't go through them. I gotta mute the game. Please unmute your microphones, please. Brothers, unmute your microphones. Okay, I have muted them. Some people reading Quran while I'm teaching. <laughs> so what question he could unmute himself. Uh, so we make the record and the standing after record, sujood and sitting between the two sajjas equal. Is that in one rakah, how does that compare from number one to number two? Are they all the same or is it for each individual rakah? For each individual rakah. The second rakah in its entirety, in its totality, is supposed to be less time than the first rakah. And the third, less than the first and the two. And the fourth is the one which has got the minimum in time. That's the norm. But if you did it, like for example, the Prophet Allah, he had recited Quran in the second rakah more than he did in the first rakah. Surah al ghashi in the second rakah, Surah al ala in the first rakah, and al ghashi is longer than al ala Naam. Zakallah khairan, Shaykh. Zakallah. Naam, Shaykh. Um, if someone misses a pillar in the prayer, does it invalidate the rakah only or the whole prayer? It invalidates the rakah. You don't stop okay. there, you just do the rakah. But if you have realized later on after you pray more rakah, the rakah was invalid, then every rakah after that invalid rakah is invalid. Listen to me. So if you miss a pillar in the first rakat and you realize in the third, you have to start again from the first Correct. in the third. Yes. Okay, you exactly okay. this, your second must be the second. But how can it be the second when you is invalid? That's why mm. whatever is being built upon invalid will be invalid. No. No. Sheikh uh, Zahid here. Uh, well, can you make part in uh, Ruku and Sujood in English or any other language, or does it have to be Arabic? All the prayer from A to Z, from the community of to the salutation, has to be in Arabic. Now, if you have made your adkar, Subhana Rabbi al you say Subhana Rabbi al uh, and Subhana Rabbi al the sujood, and you did not have any uh, uh, Arabic uh, dua, uh, which is from the Prophet, you make any dua in the Arabic. If you did not have anything, then you'll make it in English. But supposed to be that is the extra supplication. But after Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, you went to the mixed supplication, which you can't do it in Arabic. Then you could do it in English. But all the times, best thing is to stick number one, not just to the Arabic, to the sayings of the Prophet. Number two, if there is no thing that you remember from the same of the Prophet, your own dua in Arabic. If you can't know Arabic, then speak in Chinese. Now. <coughs> Uh, by the way, the ones who are asking questions on the side, I can't see them. You have to ask the questions or somebody has asked questions on their behalf. I cannot read because it's the, you know, it's really, I have to really put it up. I can't really, it's too, too small for me. Can you read the question? So, Jude, is a question. Uh, Ahmed. You are in charge later on of reading the questions which are important, okay? No, Chef. Yeah, look. The person who just said before, Salamu alaikum, is that Anwar? It's Anwar, yes. Yeah. Salamu alaikum, Chef. How are you, okay? Fadbali, Anwar. Fadbali. Barakallahu feek. You know, uh, the six uh, ad'iya when you do, when you do a report, six of them, isn't it? Yes. Six uh, type of du'a. Uh, are we able to mix? You know, one day we say, uh, one dua, uh, another day we say different dua. Can we mix every day different dua? Were you from with us from the beginning of this lecture or not? Uh, I can maybe uh, a few minutes late. I've talked about this earlier. I talked about what Ibn al-Qayyim had said. And we yes, talked about yes, yes. I mean, Daqiq al and he said, I think that is the, basically the person he should say, stick to one dua. Like Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, or Subhur and Quddus Rabbi Al-Malaikati Wal Ru'ah, or Subhana Rabbi Al-Malakuti Wal Jamaruti Kibriya Wal Azim, Salat Al-Layl, in the prayer of the night. If you keep to that dua, that means okay. two rukuah, one rukuah, that du one dua. If you have another rakah, you could change the dua, but you stick to that dua. Do you understand what I'm saying? But, hey, no. I said, 
if you are praying a night prayer, where are you going to be, mashaAllah, making tahajjud? And your ruku is going to be long. Then we said that it is allowed now to combine between these hadith. You could read all of them, the six or the seven, seven of them. Or, or you can take one and repeat it all the time. Repeat it so much. Ikhil al says that repeating it, this is closer to the sunnah. He's not saying the other one is wrong. Closer no. to the sunnah. But I said regarding this that if I think Sheikh Al-Ban is saying before regarding the Adria that this will make the person go and make the person eat the words. It would be better to change between the Adria rather than just stick to one dua and what? Repeating it so many times because the person might sleep and might start yes. eating, <laughs> eating the words, you know. So, 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 yes. so I'm going to say Subhan Rabbi al -Azim. No. Uh, just one question, uh, you know, from my uh, little daughter. She's asking uh, that, uh, you know, when she pray, she put a sutra and a little baby pass, you know, uh, pass the sutra. Is that allowed or not? No problem, inshallah. But the baby, uh, uh, the baby does not invalidate the prayer. But we have to make sure that when we pray, that we don't pray where the baby is so close, it's going to break. But if the baby is going to, between me and my sutra, we treat yeah. the baby like a sheep. How? Okay. After Allah, he saw a sheep. You're going to pass between him and his sutra. They went forward. The sheep still wanted to come. It's a sheep. Okay? Yes. Still coming forward. And she insisted to come between him and his sutra. After Allah stuck himself to the wall. And she passed behind him. So we treat the baby the same thing. We go forward until the baby passes what? Behind us. You could pick up the baby. You pick him up. No problem. We were praying. Pick up the baby. He's calling the baby. Yeah? the baby. And make him exactly. I don't, the, the crossing is to go from one side to the other. So if you pick up the baby and put him back again, the yeah. side where he came from, that's not crossing. No. Jazakallah yeah. khair. That's all, Sheikh. Exactly. Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Sheikh, uh, <clears throat> uh, if any person uh, went to hospital as a result of coronavirus and there is uh, no facilities for performing the udu uh, with the water, so how can he able to do the time moon? If somebody, again, 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 please. Somebody. Okay, sir. Uh, if someone uh, went to hospital as a result of coronavirus, okay. and there is no facilities to perform udu with the water, then how he can perform the time moon? I, I, I didn't ask Bashir, I didn't, I didn't understand Bashir. There is no water in the hospital? No, the problem is because of his uh, condition is very severe. So that's why he cannot move from the bed and go to the toilet and uh, perform the wudu. So while he is in, in the... That person, but by the way, any person here at the moment, I'm gonna, let me tell you, and I beg you, any person in the quarantine in the hospital for, for COVID-19, he will have his own toilet. Okay. Inside the room, he will have his own toilet. So, he'll, uh, so if he's got his own toilet, we say to him, go and make wudu inside the toilet. Oh, I cannot make wudu because there's nobody to take me there and I, I am helpless. I can't really move. Okay? Then this person should be prepared. Somebody had to help him to get him a tile, brick, extend, you can make wudu, which is called tayammum. Bismillah. Then after that, he looks it in his hands. If there is something there, he blow it. If it's too thick, like that. And then his face and then his hand. Finished. That's tayammum. That's in the case of he can't go to the uh, facilities of the water, okay? Yeah. Or, the water, Allah, or the water is going to affect his, let's say he's got a, 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 a severe skin disease, he can't use the water at all. And these people have got eczema, okay? Then the same thing would make him say, Ammum, inshallah. Abu Baidullah, Sheikh. Straight me up from Rukur. Um, when we say Semi Allah Niman Hamida, in the Niman, can we also say Nimani Hamida? Is that um, permissible? Saying Semi Allah, what, what is that? Instead of saying Semi Allah Niman Hamida, if I say Semi Allah Nimani in the Nun, uh, I put a Kesra and say Niman Hamida. Is that correct? Liman. It's not correct. No, it's Liman Hamida is not right. Liman Hamida. Liman Hamida. Liman Hamida. There's no Limani. There's no such thing. 
Man is a sukun. The, the, the lamb, uh, this is second as mabni. It doesn't go limani. <laughs> because of the half jar. Now. Assalamu alaikum. 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 We say that person, and the person knowingly abandons this. We say that uh, person is sinful, but because that's abandonment in something like the salah, which is like uh, directly ibadat Allah. What kind of is this more than just a, a sin? Is this a major sin if someone was to purposely not do a wajib in the salah? Do we say this is from the major sins because it's within the salah and directly going against the you know in your ibadat to Allah? The basically of what he knows about what he's doing. If he knew that the Prophet of Allah said it and he must do it, and yet he's not doing it, which is I can't imagine. If somebody wants to do the prayer and he wants to get closer to Allah, and he knows that he has to say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim in the prayer. So he says, I'm not gonna say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. What kind of person is this? I mean, this is like a question of something that I can't envision. How can he say? I know the Subhanahu wa ta'ala is compulsory. I know Muhammad said I told me to say it, but I'm not going to do it. So what did he pray in the first place? This is a question basically of something which will not happen. But let's just, for the sake of curiosity, kill the cat. Okay. Subhanallah. Any person who believes like this and he does not say it, Imam Ahmad says prayer is invalid. Okay? He says it's invalid. But if if the a person he says no, I don't think uh, he's actually uh, opposing somebody. He's doing it against somebody because he doesn't believe that this person knows about saying that compulsory. <laughs> he's actually uh, uh, being a stubborn against somebody, not against the Prophet of Allah. That's a different case. We say that he's a sinner. Now, nah, Allah wa'alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Jamal Ahmed, do you have any questions there on the thing? <laughs> yes, Sheikh. Is Go it on. sunnah? Because this question could be from sisters. Go on. Is it sunnah to prolong the ruku in order so that others may join you in the and the other they join you in what? In jama'ah? So they can catch the imam, yeah. Okay, because you already broke. Um, the, um, right. Well, this is a person who is in his ruku. He had said had somebody coming and he knows that if he caught up with the ruku, he caught up with the rakah. Should the Imam prolong his rukur in order for that person to catch up? There is no proof for that. But in general, we say, Allah said, Help one another on birra and taqwa. If you know a person, okay, who's going to come and join the prayer in the rukur, okay, we would say to that Imam, you know, give him time. Don't make him lose that rak'ah by losing the rukur. This could be taken as well from another hadith when the Prophet sallam comes to the prayer and he's already planned to recite long in the fajr and he had heard a woman had her baby crying mm -hmm. okay so what he did he shortened the prayer he was planning to read long he shortened the prayer and after the prayer he said that he didn't want this mother to be sort of concerned about her baby was a baby crying concerned baby from him for him or from him or because of him Consider on the people that saying, well, take your baby, and why are you making him cry? Why did you bring him? And also consider the baby that he wants to be attention. Okay? So that's why he would shorten that. Because of that, we say today, man, same thing that you have a man here who wants to join the prayer. Why do you want to punish him by not making him to do that? Or cool with, the, with, with you to so that you can catch up with Allah. And also we tell the person who wants to join the Rukur. You have an opportunity, Akhi. So as soon as you come to the masjid and the row, the, the, the row is too close, not far away, it's about four or five steps to reach it, you could make the Qiyot Ihram while you are just coming in, before you join the Imam, you make the Qiyot Ihram, and then you make Allahu Akbar for Rukur, and you make Rukur, and you start walking while you make a Rukur. Whether the Imam said, Sami Allah, before you joined the row, or you did not, 
you have alhamdulillah caught up with the rak'ah so you caught up with the rak'ah so that means you don't have to worry about it so what the people say and they do when they see the imam in his ruku' and they come in into the masjid they do the following things and all of it wrong 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 first one they see the imam in his ruku' <coughs> What does that mean? Saying to the Imam, please wait for me. They're not saying it like, but it, <coughs> that means I'm coming, Akhi. And that's disturbance. Second one, they run. And running is against what the Prophet said, Alaykum bis sakinati wal waqar. Take it easy when you join the prayer. So he's running. Third one, which is the worst, because he wants to catch up with the Rukur. He does his takbirat al ihram so quick that some of it goes while he's going down. So he say, Allahu Akbar. If he said like this, Allahu Akbar, so the Allah went when he went down. Huh? That prayer of mine is not going to be accepted as fard. Maybe we accepted as sunnah, as nafila, but not fard. With the consensus of all scholars. I have to say, Allahu Akbar, fully standing up. <laughs> fully standing up. And then, just for the sake of making sure that I'm saying it's standing up, I would say the second takbir of ruku'a, Allahu Akbar. The second takbir, Allahu Akbar, for ruku'a, I do it, doesn't matter if I did it when I'm going down. Because I guaranteed my first takbir al haram standing up. Allahu Akbar. Okay? So I say, Allahu Akbar. And people, they say, and the Imam is in the Rukur. What do they say? They do this. is another mistake as well. And it's a fourth mistake. They say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar for Rukur. Why do you do like this, Sahih? This is for something that you want to stand up for dissertation. The Imam is not reciting. The Imam is in the Rukur. So what do you say? Allahu Akbar. And your hands down. And then Allahu Akbar for Ruku and you go for Ruku. There's no Allahu Akbar like this, and then Allahu Akbar like that. Okay? You say Allahu Akbar. You can make takbira on takbira, no problem. Allahu Akbar, and then he said, Allahu Akbar, you went down. No problem. But the first one has to be when you are fully standing up. The second one, it doesn't matter what you said it before you went down or while you're going down. It doesn't affect your prayer for Allah Ta'ala Adam. Okay, another question, Ahmad? Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. If you made a mistake uh, and you missed a pillar and you remembered just before the taslim, what do you do in that situation? Can I just ask you, please, how, how, how much time has been spent now at the moment? I can't see the time for this. How much time now? You can't see it? I can't see the timing here. Right. See the, say the question again. doesn't matter. Say the question. Over an hour, Sheikh. Okay. The question is, if you made a mistake, and you missed the pillar in the salah. Then you remember before taslim. What do you do in that situation? You remember before the taslim or after? He just remembered before the taslim. That you missed the pillar? Yeah, they said they missed the pillar and they remembered just I before the taslim. He asked the same question. He asked, well, when I had somebody else. We said, when you have missed a pillar, you return back to the that raka that you have missed a pillar in it. So you have, let's say that you have made your first raka full. The second raka was not having rukur. It's a pillar. Then you went to the third raka. Did the fourth raka uh, before you missed meditation? Oh, I've done no rukur in the second raka. So I'll go now, start from the second raka. First is okay. But the third and the fourth, they are jeopardized. And answer the question before. So please, Ahmed, focus with me. Don't ask questions being asked. Someone is saying, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh, could you please repeat how you raise your hands after Ruku? Okay. Sami Allahu liman hamida, we said it. But I'm in the Ruku now. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Then Rabbana wa lakal hamd is linked to the hands. Linked to the hands and the following. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So Rabbana wa lakal hamd is with, 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 with the raising of the hands. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Or. I'm sorry, Chef, the video is frozen. Hello, sir. Is it, is it telling me, sorry, video is what? It's just paused on you. It's not moving. Now it's moving, alhamdulillah. Okay. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So I said, then I raised. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. I raised first, then I said Rabbana wa lakal hamd. All these three things had been said correctly. So please, that person who asked this question, are you satisfied with this answer? Have you got it? 
Say yes or no. Write down. Or say. He's not there. Okay, another question, Yahmad? He says he's satisfied, Sheikh. Okay, yeah. next question is, if the Imam, he doesn't say Amin out loud, do we still say it? And he's asking specifically if he was to pray behind a, an Imam who is a Hanafi in his... Uh... Uh, saying of the Amin, if the Imam did not say Amin, uh, am I not supposed to say Amin or not? Now this depends. If this Imam, you think he's just a blind follower, meaning he has got no knowledge. And he has just ba basically because I'm Hanafi, I'm not going to say Amin. And you say Amin, and maybe inshallah you get other people to say Amin with you. But if you think you're going to be beaten up in a masjid which is Hanafi, I would rather not to say Amin loud because some of the Hanafis are really very strict regarding this issue, and they will not allow you. They will spot you. Oh, you are a stranger. So they won't necessarily be kicked out. So it, it depends. But if you could really, but if this Imam is Hanafi and he believes. Okay, that what he's doing is correct and with the proof of his, regardless of wrong or not right, then you have to follow the Imam of what he does. Are you in a car, yeah, Ahmed? No, I'm, I'm not. It was Sorry, it's me. It's me, I'll mute it. Sorry. No. Uh, somebody is asking, um, I'm not really sure of the question, but they're saying, can you say different du'as in sujood, more than one? Maybe he means azkar. I have said that. I've answered this question. Now, somebody is asking, Salaam Alaikum Sheikh, some shuk do not include a sunnah with the Asr prayer. But I remember from a previous lesson that you said there is. Is this sunnah of the Rawatib sunnahs or not? Can you also explain the difference between a sunnah and a nafil, voluntary? Somebody, I don't know what he did. He just shared the screen with us or something. I don't know what he did. Allah al -Mustan. Some people just playing around. Yeah, Juan, you don't. Please, we focus on the class. Well, uh, you said regarding, again, because I, the, the screen has gone from me, I don't know what happened. What did you say? Okay, sure. He's saying, Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh. Some shuyukh, they don't include a sunnah with the asr prayer. But okay. I remember from uh, uh, a yes, previous. Well, well, they, they, let's just take the questions of the class, inshallah. I would say, yes, the asr prayer, it has a sunnah afterwards. And there's a hadith from Aisha and Umar al-Khattab and others as well. Now, it's too soon. That's, that's all the, that's all the questions that's all the I questions have in the chat. Have a question from the floor, from the microphones. Last question. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ilaha astaghfiruka wa atubu lak zakum Allah. Sheikh, sorry, there's one now. On. When do we raise with the Imam? When do we raise our hands with the Imam? I don't understand that. When do we raise with the Imam? I don't know. He's saying when the Imam says Sami Allahu liman Hamida. When, when he's up Sami Allahu liman Hamida and he goes up, then we go with him. We go up Sami Allahu liman Hamida. And then we say Rabbana wa lakal hamd in the ways that I have explained before. Jazakallah khair. You don't go with him. You don't go with him. You say Sami Allahu liman Hamida and then you say Sami Allahu liman Hamida. Subhanakallah bi hamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta Our poem inshallah tomorrow, I think. And we have fifth class. With the brothers from Kaidu, Salaam Alaikum. Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. And by the way, the class is going to be 8 o'clock, 10 past 8, the same time because of the Maghrib plan. InshaAllah. Jazakallah, Sayyid Shaykh. Salaam Alaikum. 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 Salaam Alaikum.